name is Lindsay. It is so nice to see you guys. For those of you who are returning, I love you guys. Thanks for coming back. And for those of you who are here for the first time, I hope that you really find that this content is helpful and inspiring. And if you do, please consider liking, subscribing, commenting, sharing with a friend, clicking the notification bell, all of those things. They help you and they also help me because it shows the YouTube algorithm that people actually like this stuff. And then the YouTube kind of pushes out in front of other people as well. So, if you'd like to help me out, please consider doing those things. And now that we've gotten through that, let's just jump straight in to the story that we're going to be talking about today. A few years ago, I was living in Melbourne. Many of you <laughs> know that by now. So, Melbourne is in Victoria, in the southern part of the east side of Australia. And God called me down there in 2019 to become a chaplain at a Christian school. The school that I was working at had two campuses and because of that they had like a whole fleet of buses to go between the campuses and to pick up the the students for school take them from their houses to the school and then back again in the afternoons and so we had i don't even know maybe even 10 buses all up i never got around to counting them but i noticed that there was one very odd bus on the school grounds at one of the campuses and it was a very, very colourful bus and I remember asking somebody about it once and they said it, it belonged to ADRA, which is the Adventist Development and Relief Agency, which is associated with the church denomination that my school was also associated with. And so this bus just kind of stayed on our school grounds until it was used for ministry purposes out in the community throughout the week. And one of our bus drivers for the school was also the bus driver for this particular crazy colored, covered in paint, very colorful kind of bus that they used for ADRA outreach, so for ministry outreach. And so I always knew that in the back of my mind that this bus was just hiding in the corner of campus and I didn't really know what it was used for throughout the week. And then a year after I started working there, one evening I was just feeling like sushi as you do sometimes and I didn't feel like cooking for myself and I was a bit hungry and it was just getting late and I was just wasting time getting around to getting out of my room and driving for 15 minutes to go to the local shopping center where I knew I could find a little sushi bar or something or you know just some kind of takeaway I I didn't really have the money to be wasting on takeaway at the time I had a very minimal budget but I just decided, you know what, I'm going to do it today. And I eventually went to the major shopping center. And when I parked, I started walking towards the shopping center. And I realized that this very colorful, very distinctive bus that I usually saw at school was just sitting here outside the giant shopping center. And I poked my head in. And I realized that the, the main bus driver for the school was sitting inside of this bus all by himself. And I said, what are you doing here? And he said, oh, this is the Adra bus and we park it out here. I don't know, if, I think it was Thursday nights. And usually we have a volunteer person from the community who is a counselor who will be available in this bus. And a lot of the time there are at risk young people who go and sometimes cause a bit of mischief in the shopping center, do some shoplifting, whatever. But there are a lot of at risk youth around here. And so this bus is a safe place for those young people to come along. And there's usually a counselor here. We can connect them to resources in the community to help them with whatever they need. And this is kind of like the first point of contact for that. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. So where's the counselor today? And my friend, the bus driver told me, oh, well, something happened recently and our usual counselor is not here right now and we were supposed to get somebody else but they haven't turned up so we're actually i'm just parking here tonight but there is no counselor today and i was like oh that's interesting and so i sat and chatted with him for a couple of minutes longer and as we were talking somebody knocked on the door of the bus and it was an older lady probably probably about 50 or 60 years old and she knocked on the door and said, hey, can I get some help? 
and I looked at the bus driver and then I looked at this lady and I was like sure okay come in and she sat down and the bus driver decided he was gonna go outside and walk around for a bit and I ended up having this chat with this lady and she was just some person from the community who was looking for somebody to listen to her I guess she'd heard that there was a counselor on this bus and there was somebody that maybe she could talk to but I wasn't a counselor I was actually working as a chaplain so I had a lot of similar enough skills that I could be helpful in this situation there was nobody else as a counselor there and so I said hey I can talk to you this is what I do for a living so I'll, I'll talk to you and so we had a bit of a long conversation and this lady she had a lot of hurt in her life and it was largely connected to I guess her ex-partner and she had a lot of unforgiveness by the end of the conversation I realized that the thing that would help her the most was if she learned how to forgive even if she didn't see this person ever again to, to say I forgive you but just in her heart to forgive this person because that was what was holding her back in life and I suggested that and she seemed like oh wow that was such a new idea and it was really helpful for her and she really appreciated it and I tried to connect her in with a local church so that she could have more people to connect with she didn't seem to have a lot of community around her and so that was a real blessing and I spent maybe an hour or so sitting on that bus talking to this lady in, in this situation that I had never expected to be in, I didn't realize the bus was there, I didn't realize what it was doing or how often it went or anything like that. I just wanted to go and get some sushi <laughs> and I was dragging my feet to get there in the first place. But then I was in the right place at the right time to talk to this lady and to just really help her process through some emotions that she was experiencing and some issues in her life. And I really felt like God and like the Holy Spirit prompted me to go seeking out some food that evening and go and get some takeaway or whatever and instead of ending up doing that being in this right place at this right time to meet this lady and when that was all over I wasn't actually really feeling hungry anymore but I still went to get some food and, and I, I realized that as I was eating I was like yeah I definitely didn't come to this shopping center today to get food this was definitely God bringing me here, like this food that I'm eating right now is not satisfying anywhere near as much as that conversation that I had this, with this lady completely out of the blue. And it was just a really amazing way to see how God was working in my life when I was, you know, alone at home and feeling hungry and not wanting to make myself any food but just go get some takeaway. God used that situation so that this other lady was able to get some support and, and just somebody to listen to her. Another time that something like this happened was about a year ago, so I think it was January last year. I was having a day off, I didn't really have anywhere I needed to be and I went exploring in my new area that I was living in and there was <laughs> There was a pizza shop that was called Vulcan Pizza, I think, and it had a big picture of a volcano, and I love volcanoes. I've always loved volcanoes since I was a little kid, so I was like, oh, I want to check out that pizza shop, and this is the middle of the afternoon, like middle of the day, and I went and parked where I saw this volcano pizza shop, and I realized when I got there that it was closed and it wouldn't open till 5 p.m., and I was like, oh, well, that was a waste. But you know what, I'm parked here, how about I just walk down this street and see what other little cute cafes might be here and just explore. I love exploring new areas. And so I went for this walk and I was thinking to myself, I shouldn't, I shouldn't be buying pizza or any other kind of, you know, cafe food right now. I don't really have the money to be spending once again, or wasting on this kind of thing. I could just be cooking for myself at home. Um, and saving my money for something more important but I just still decide you know I'm just gonna go check out this cool burger cafe and I found a burger cafe just down the street from this pizza shop and so I went and sat down inside and found a nice little place to sit and ordered some food and then I overheard at the next table two people having a conversation and there were these two ladies and the one who was sort of facing in my direction was talking rather loudly but I could hear her sharing her faith really passionately as a Christian and sharing with this other lady 
This is my testimony. This is the experience that I had with Jesus. And this is how he's changed my life. And it was just really nice to hear that in this random cafe that I had not planned to be in, that this other young lady was sharing her faith. And I, I decided just while I was eating to pray for them, for whoever she was sharing her faith with, that they would get to know God and, and that this would be a fruitful conversation. I didn't really have any context. It was just what I was picking up from what I could overhear. I wasn't trying to eavesdrop really. It was just, we were at the next table. So yeah, so I prayed and I just felt really strongly compelled by the end of of my meal that when they get up to leave, I'm ready to go. I'll just wait around. Uh, when they get up to leave and pay, I want to get up as well and just, you know, tell this girl that it was really nice to hear her sharing her faith. And so I went up and spoke to her when they got up and I was like, hey, that was really cool. And then I was like, can I get your number? Can we hang out sometime? And she was like, uh, sure, okay. And so we exchanged numbers and I just felt really compelled, really bold in that moment, like the boldness of the Holy Spirit to go up and talk to this woman. And so it went okay. And a few days later, she called me up and uh, we set up a time to meet up because she had to rush away in that moment with, with her friend. And she told me that she'd actually talked to some friends back at her old hometown in New South Wales who also happened to be people that I knew from my university because it was all in the same little university town. This woman that I overheard at the cafe happened to come from the same town that I'd been living in to study. And she spoke to some friends who happened to know me and they were like, yeah, Lindsay's great. We love her. She's really cool. And so this, this person that I was now becoming friends with, she was like, yep, my friends told me you're not an axe murderer so we can go hang out. And I was like, oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> and so we started becoming friends from that point on and now she's one of my closest friends it was like a really amazing way that god brought her and i to be together uh to be friends and i love sharing this story with people she's such a cool person and i just want to say i love you you know who you are you're amazing but yeah i just really wanted to share this story that i was not really planning to do anything that particular day, um, but I was exploring, I was doing my own thing, and yet God used my, you know, search for food or search for adventure to actually bring me into contact in this time of restfulness, in this time of, you know, just exploring and resting and, and doing my own thing, not being in a rush. God used that moment to connect me with a really strong Christian friend. I was kind of looking for some more friends at that point, hoping to make some more connections in this new city that I didn't really know a lot of people in still two years later. And she and I became connected and it was just a really wonderful blessing for the both of us. And now we're still very close friends to this day. And we've really encouraged each other and, and you know, pushed each other to continue in our Christian journey together. I just really want to touch on this point about divine interruptions. So what these two stories show us is that we can be going about our own day and having our own plans or maybe not even having our own plans and just doing whatever but then God will sometimes break into our routine into our plans into really pressing things sometimes or into just those moments where we don't really know what we're doing or we feel like we shouldn't be spending this kind of money or going to this kind of place just out of principle you know financially or whatever like God can break into those those thoughts and into those actions and actually bring some really divine connections divine appointments divine interruptions into our lives and that this is actually what he's calling us to do our our lives and our ministry is not about what can I check off today on my to-do list or who can I meet and who can I how can I organize my life to to do God's work when we submit and surrender our lives to God fully, even in those moments when we're feeling just hangry in the evening and we want to get some sushi, God can use those moments. He can bring us into connection with people who really need that. For me and my friends, the second story I just told you, we both really, really needed that moment. And if I didn't go to this 
place to find a volcano pizza that didn't exist and then walk down the street and be like, oh, I shouldn't be spending my money, but I'm here anyway and I'm gonna eat this cafe food anyway. If I hadn't just kind of gone along with what the Holy Spirit was leading me into, I would not have this amazing, encouraging friend. It's not always just about how can I reach out to other people who completely don't know Jesus. Sometimes Jesus actually brings us into connection with other really strong Christians in these divine interruption, divine appointment kind of ways. And it was just one of, one of my favorite meetings that I've ever had, to be honest. So yeah, I just want to encourage you, whatever you're going through, allow some room for the Holy Spirit to move. Don't have so much of a to-do list or have too much crammed into your day that, that the Holy Spirit can't move and change and, and give you a new direction. Sometimes you might have some really important meetings, but God will actually break in to those moments and say, no, we're going to go in a different direction right now. And are you going to submit to the Holy Spirit's leading and put your own plans on hold? Or are you going to allow him to move and to do some really amazing things? That's what I want to leave you guys with today. This is what church is. This is what the New Testament church is about. This is what um, God has been doing throughout all of humanity. He's been breaking in. In every story in the Bible that we see, God breaks in. And actually, I really want to share this one more thing with you. Something that I've been trying a lot recently in the last maybe four or five months um, is to read through the Bible. But before I read a story, I pray and I say, God, what are you saying in this story? Where are you showing up in this story? What is your character? Please show me more of who you are. And something I found really helpful is to underline any space um, in any story that God is speaking or God is breaking in, whether that's through a vision or a dream or actually speaking to somebody. And I find that really interesting to see how much God is speaking to us through his word and how much he's breaking into the everyday moments of life. So I really want to encourage you guys also <laughs> to look for those things in the Bible. How is God speaking? How is God directing? What are those little moments in, in life throughout the Bible stories that God was breaking in? And how can he do that in your life as well? All right, so that is all from me today. I really encourage you to go out there and just let God lead you throughout this next week. And I'll see you guys again next Friday. Bye.